Welcome back. Glad to know you're still with us. Organized labor in the nation's electricity sector has issued a strike notice to the federal government, rejecting the takeover of some electricity distribution companies, DISCOs, by banks, among others. In a 14-day ultimatum to the federal government, through the ministers of power, labor, and employment, among others, dated July 7, 2022, the organized labor contended that it is obvious that the owners of the discos would not have obtained loans from banks for the discos as collateral through privatization, and there is no way the banks will seize discos, jenkos, or any other company before take over under the pretense that they were indebted to them. Meanwhile, the federal government, through the permanent secretary, Minister of Power, in a response letter dated July 20, explained that the recent, the recent change in the equity ownership of some of the electricity distribution companies' discos was a lender action, stepping in to take over the shares of the associated core investors, largely as a result of failure to honor debt obligations. Well, that's the story now, and for further analysis, we're joined by Femi Olukoto, the CEO, Brook Heritage Capital Limited. Hello, good to have you join us, sir. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Nice having me. Nice yes. having you. <laughs> thank you. Now, electricity workers under the aegis of the National Union of Electricity Employees, that's NUEE, has issued a 14-day notice for the federal government to address issues in the power sector. And they are also saying that the banks should exit the sector because they believe the presence of the banks has been a distraction. How did this come to you? Well, um, is um, is not a surprise uh, move, really, and uh, I mean the labor's move is not surprising because uh, if there are continuous employment, is going to be in jeopardy or is going to be a victim of um, a form of uh, takeover or change in ownership. You expect that. Uh, Organized labor will actually react the way they are. But um, the Jenkos becoming um, insolvent and banks taking over, well, I think it's obvious to everybody that uh, the expectation at the point of privatization is not what we are actually seeing at the moment. So um, I think government has to step in and step in very fast so as to save the situation as it is. But is inevitable. It has to come, and it has come. How we go from here is what now matters. Okay. Uh, I think uh, first uh, I'd like us to break down uh, what exactly is happening because um, on the one hand, the union is concerned, and here is what the union actually said. I'll quote the union verbatim now. It is obvious that the owners of these discos would not have obtained loans from banks with the discos of facilities as collateral pre-privatization and there is no way the banks will seize discos, genkos, or any other company before takeover under the pretense that they were indebted to them. Now, that is the union talking. And then on the other hand, the federal government is saying the recent change in the equity ownership of some of the distribution companies, that's the discos, was a lender action. And then stepping in to take over the shares of the associated core investors largely as a result of failure to honor debt obligations. And they're saying this is not... Well, okay, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and they're also saying that this is not on account of a debt owed by discos as separate legal entities. They are saying the involvement of the banks at board level is a consequence of the ownership and corporate governance of the discos. Help us understand this, really. Uh, well, I did not hear you very well. You actually, um, there was a break in transmission, but if I can pick the pieces together, I think um, the banks must have lent based on cash flow of the discos performing their day to day functions. So, irrespective of the collateral involved now, you cannot say that the bank, that there will be a clause within the lending um, um, conditions that will have warranted the, the bank coming in as they have. And um, before, this is not an asset uh, realization process. 
It is actually a, a process that uh, wants to save the cash flow so as to be able to continue to service the loan. And um, obviously, the banks are not going to be there for, for... That's why I say government must actually come in at, the, at this time. The banks cannot continue to stay on the board. It's, it's not ethical, and they can't, they can't serve their own interest in, in another, on another person's property. And you know, um, share ownership um, in the discos, I think the government still has about 40%. In all the discourse. So I think all these um, um, rights of ownership have to be exercised now across board. So the banks cannot continue to stay on the board of the discourse. The employees are right in perspective and uh, have to be looked into. And uh... Okay, um, can you hear me? If you can hear me, uh, please continue. All right, so he's, to, he's been talking about uh, what's happening. We have uh, the employees talking about how it affects them, the fact that, you know, they are afraid that their jobs might be threatened and some other things. And on the one hand, they are saying that they doubt the, uh, what the federal government is saying. But, of course, the federal government is trying to make it plain to them that, look here, these people are going to be here temporarily. They are not going to be here for too long. And just like our guest rightly said, he talked about uh, the fact that they will not stay on the board for for too long they will only be there for a while if you if you can hear me please go ahead well um what i'm trying to say is that as it is now the the banks are more interested in the loan that they have expended to be serviced and that is why they believe that okay there is something that is actually going on in the day-to-day -day management of the discourse that is not allowing efficiency in ensuring that the loan that are being lent out are being serviced. So what the banks are doing now is to save a situation. They are not taking over, they can't, they can't own the discourse. They are, their interest is limited to the loan they have actually disbursed, which needs to be paid back. And you know, even as consumers generally, they have been complaining about, okay, what is actually the difference between then and now in terms of disco performances but that's a discussion for another day now, now that you have now, mentioned are... it now that you have mentioned it i think it's something we need to talk about because even okay. the uh, nuee that's the union know, they also made reference to that okay yes you may go ahead you may talk about it so there there have been a very serious issue about what exactly are the deliverables for this newly for the for the for the for the new uh, owners of the disco when they came in then because people could not really feel the effect of the fact that okay this thing is no more run by government because there is a general belief that there is government doesn't have any business in business yes they have to regulate fine private sectors have come to regulate but how far have they been able to go but the truth is that from day one it is clear that those that have actually taken over most of those that are actually taking over the discos are not those that could run the disco. They, are, they don't have the financial where with that to actually go into this disco itself. So you have subjected a lot of your cash flow into a funding, a short-term funding system, which will actually affect you at the point of repayment. You need a long-term funding. You need a long-term funding for this kind of transaction. As it is now, it is not looking like we had anything like that. Because if the discos are if the discos are looking insolvent at the moment, then we have a problem of what kind of loan did you get in there in the first instance? Now, apart from looking at the loans, I'm also looking at the process of awarding these bids to these people. If it were more transparent, uh, if, it's, if due process was taken, are we going to be here at this point? Recall also that the union sounded a note of warning to the federal government over the lack of financial capacity of these companies to buy into the 18 unbundled companies in the power sector preparatory to its privatization. So what are we well, looking at here? We, we, we have to be very careful before making very, very serious um, assertions in relation to transparency, due process, and what have you. Because I want to believe that, to a very reasonable extent, based on what we have been made to believe, we have been told that, yes, due to process were followed, bid, bid processes 
happened and what have you. But the union, and that is why unions in Nigeria need to pick their fights. I can remember, yes, then they actually um, sound notes of warning in respect of um, people that are being, that are taking over these discos and what have you. But because the union fights all battles, so we're already getting to a point where Nigerians themselves will not even take the union so seriously on matters that are very important. So at this level now, obviously those that took over the discourse do not know what they are going into. I can say that. That's in my own personal opinion. And I'm entitled to it. They do not know what they are going into because they are actually, they are, they are actually in a terrain that they are not familiar with because that is clear. Can you hear me? All right. He was talking about the fact that uh, the discos who took over are in a terrain that they do not understand or that they are not familiar with. But one would have thought that before you take up such responsibility, you plan and then you look at the you, you look at a lot of factors to be sure that it's something you can do. And if you're taking loans, you should also be sure that you know during the tenure for which it's going to last, you'll be able to meet up and pay those loans. And I don't know if you can hear me. Please go ahead uh, because you mentioned something. I think we need to talk about talking about the fact that the union is fighting all back. Battles. When we say the union is fighting all, all battles, if we put it into, if you put this into consideration, the fact that even their jobs are being threatened, uh, if we put that into consideration, would we still be right to say they are fighting all battles? Or what battles should they be fighting and what battles should they just let go? If you can hear me, please go ahead. I'd like you to respond to this. All right, I guess uh, we're having connection issue right there. Well, we've been talking about uh, the discourse and, of course, the back and forth between the discourse and the federal government. With the federal government saying, well, the fact that uh, banks are taking over isn't a permanent thing. It is temporary. We'll take a break now, and when we return, we will continue this conversation with Femi Olukoto. Stay with us. <music> We're also talking about the discourse and federal government on pass. We have with us Femi Olukot on the CEO, Brook Heritage Capital Limited. Thanks for uh, joining us again. Now, before uh, we got disconnected, you were talking about the fact that the union should pick their battles. And I was asking, if you say they should pick their battles, isn't it part of their, of, shouldn't it be their concern that their jobs are being threatened uh, from their own perspective? Yes, just like uh, what I started with, it, I, I, I said that um, they have the right to actually um, call the attention and raise the alarm as soon as banks are taking over the management of uh, of the of the discos, which is uh, which can actually threaten their their pay. But what I'm saying about of picking their battles is that you see, at the point of um, Going into this privatization process in 2013, 14, or thereabout, you discover that the unions themselves were actually shouting out, and they are trying to call the attention of government to the fact that this should properly should be properly done. But because the union are known to shout, so sometimes when there is a very serious need for the authorities to actually pay more attention to your noise, then it, it, it is going to be taken as, okay, that's your usual practice. You will always shout. So that's what I meant by picking battles. Because to be very frank and sincere, they have actually raised this alarm before now that there is need for government to actually look into those that are actually picking up these um, um, assets. And um, not to actually, because as it is now, we have actually moved from Fripan to, to, to fire, so to say. And there is need for government intervention. And the, yes, no doubt about that, the Siemens um, um, move by the federal government is, yes, it can be applauded. But um, the truth is that it has to go into all this. Because we have to look at the uh, the, the generation. You can see that uh, we've had series of uh, grid collapse in the last, uh, I think, about seven times this year, which is not supposed to be. It's, it's an aberration. 
And this has to do, it has a lot to do with the need to revamp the whole power sector in itself from the beginning till the end. So what I meant by them picking their battles is to ensure that they don't just shout at every little issues. Let them pick their battles. Let us know that, yes, now that um, Union Electricity uh, uh, Electricity Companies Union don't just shout, but when they shout, let us always be eager to listen. So that's what I meant by picking their battles. All right, thank you so much for your thoughts. We do appreciate your time on the show today. Thank you.